In this video, we will reveal the shocking truth about Petaling street food in Kuala Lumpur. We tried five different foods from the filthiest to the most fanciest. We were surprised by what we found. You wouldn't believe what we saw and ate. Stay tuned to find out. Red oil spring roll or popia with radish is by far the best we've eaten. Not easy to find back home, so we need to try it. Right on the roadside at the corner of Jalan Sultan and Jalan Hang Lekir, we found Auntie Ying's popia stall. It looked clean enough with fresh vegetables, covered condiments and steaming hot radish. I totally enjoyed the popia. It was crispy, flavorful, and juicy. We gave it an eight score out of ten because it's clean and it was taste good. Whenever you come to Petaling Street, must try the Hokkien Mee. There are many restaurants and stalls offering Hokkien Mee in Petaling Street. But this particular stall really caught our eyes. To get to Dunmun Street, you will need to cross a back alley lane that screams of horror. During the day, this black alley is actually a wet market selling fresh vegetables, pork, chicken, and fish. Unpleasant streets that I have ever seen with the raids running around. You. At night, it becomes a food playground for the hordes of rats. If you can stomach it after seeing the rats, the rubbish, the dirty water, and smelling the urine, they are interesting food stalls, highly rated by customers at the entrances of this back alley lane. From Yong Tau Fu at Madras Street to Kai Ki Restaurant. Most of the food stalls are located at the four entrances towards this back alley wet market called Penjaja Gallery Jalan Tun HSK. They offer a variety of foods from laksa, yong tofu, hakami, and konlau noodles. Luckily, Dun Moon Street Food Court is separated from this alley. We decided to brave it and try the Hokkien Mee. The cook of our noodle told us that he had been doing this for 40 years. He also claimed that his Hokkien Mi was the most authentic in town. How long have you been doing this? Uh, 56 years already. After 13 years old, I come up. Uh, <laughs> so I started, I learned everything from Taiwan. Taiwan? Taiwan. 26 years. Yeah. And I am born in the US and New York for 5 years. Wow. After that, 42, I come back here. <laughs> right, 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 right. I working in Light Light Sheraton. Wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. The Hokkien Mee, the good one, the pepper one, not much. Huh? Not much already, right? Yeah. Let's try. Mm. 
definitely we were not disappointed of the food. For these stalls, our rating is 8 out of 10 because they serve the big and fresh prawns, which I really love. On top of that, the portion is quite a lot, quite huge for the price that we paid, value for money. One morning, we decided to have porridge. And porridge is really not my breakfast food. I always love breakfast with porridge. So I convinced Jack, let's try this street food of the quality porridge that I have. Yuki Jin Chong Fun and Porridge has its main stall right outside Peng City Food Court. It looks humid, hot, and unventilated with questionable cleanliness. We found a spot 20 meters away, which was reserved for Yuki Chi's customers. Here, today, we're going to try the porridge, hot porridge. It should be safe. fish porridge. It was good, but unfortunately there's a lot of these tiny tiny bones which turned me out. I didn't eat straight away. I was busy trying to cool it down. As you know, porridge comes really really hot. Scooping it up, scooping it up, you know, trying to cool it down. So I took some. So I was doing that. You know, I saw that end. I was like, is that dead end? I really look at it and it was a dead end. So I continued, that's okay, fine. I scooped the dead end out and I just pour it away. Then I continue doing it, scooping up, scooping down. The next one, you know what else I found? A tiny strip aluminum foil. It was shiny bright, you can spot it immediately. And again, I just took it out, scooped it and put it away. That was when I decided like, should I finish this porridge? I mean like, would you leave a comment below? So you can guess the rating for this stall that we gave? 1 out of 10? No, I think we should give 0. <laughs> it's a 5 star breakfast and with 3000 review. You can't get better than that! We needed to find a 5-star, highly rated restaurant to have our breakfast snacks. We went to Hoko, which had a pretty good system for managing the queue. We got our ticket from the machine and waited for a turn. We ordered two half-boiled eggs, curry chichong fan, a set of kaya butter toasted bread, a kumquat drink, and a three pieces of colored dim sum rolls. very fast and the price are reasonable. We have two options, Michelin or Mi Tarek. Mi Tarek is out of the option after we saw what goes behind the scenes. Mi Tarek is a Muslim Chinese restaurant specialized in Chinese ramen or pool noodles. It was very popular with a huge crowd waiting for their orders. We were tempted but we changed our mind when we saw the back of the restaurant where part of the cooking was done. It was at the back alley which is dirty, smelly and full of rats. We chose a beef gourmet Michelin restaurant instead. It's called Nam Hyong Chicken Rice at Jalan Sultan which had been specializing in Hainanese chicken rice since 1938. 
The Michelin Guide praises this restaurant for its generous portions, reasonable prices, fast and friendly service, and a cozy, relaxing atmosphere. We ordered a plate of chicken with barbecue pork, a double boiled lotus roots with chicken feet soup, and a plate of choy sam. The chicken rice here was nothing to brave about. The chicken was decent but the rice was not aromatic. I think the uh, chicken rice back home was better. And also, the pork had a very gamey taste to it. Our rating for this is 6 out of 10. Soup was good and it was hot and full of meat. Watch that! Purple Nightmare! Subscribe and comment!